recording now, so go ahead. Okay, um, welcome everyone. And um, any uh, comments or corrections to the uh, minutes of the uh, 29th of June? I don't have any. I have a motion. I motion we accept. A second. Second. Okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. That was Bill. Gene, you need to come and vote. Aye. Okay. So that was Bill, and who, who, who seconded? Was that Laura? Jingles? Laura. Mm -hmm. Laura. As Laura Norton just joined us, so. Did, yeah. All right, so Laura, that was a motion by Bill Kennedy and second by Laura Ingras to accept the minutes. That's as far uh, we as we have approval. Any, any op opposition? Approved, okay. All right, James, I have an adjustment to the agenda. Okay. Um, so instead of uh, Bill Suter joining us, um, I would like to add to the agenda um, the Mask Up initiative and visits to our business community as our last item for discussion or one item for discussion. So what we would have is a marketing update, um, an affordable housing discussion, uh, a mask initiative discussion, and then um, wanted Laura Jingrus to give a little update Jean did on hospital reopening. So I think that's, those are the items. Are there any other items folks have? I'm sorry, what was the one you had on a mask? I didn't quite yeah, understand I it. talk about um, this initiative with the hospital, with our business community for masks, a mask. So those are two different topics? No, it's, there's, there what? are two. One is, one is Laura's gonna give an update just on reopening, but we, I wanna okay. speak to the group about um, actually a project that we're gonna take on as a group with our business community, so. Okay, and then we're also adding uh, Bill's uh, comment about the EF charging station. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So Bill, we're gonna go with you for those two things first. So you got marketing comm to start with. Um, not anything major to report other than the fact that we have suspended um, our relationship with the ledger transcript until uh, the beginning of August. So for the month of July, we basically were not doing the Our Town Together relationship, you might say. Um, there, we, we're going to restart that in August for two reasons. Uh, the primary reason is the fact that, that the um, project is being supported by uh, I believe federal or state funds, and they run out at the end of August, so they have to use them up. Uh, the other reason, of course, is the fact that a lot of attention has been away from uh, COVID-19 and refocused on a variety of other things that are going on in the summer and primarily. So, um, so anyway, that's going to happen. Um, we have not received, or at least I have not seen, any additional nominations for our town together coverage although we have been uh, doing it continuously um, uh, one uh, per week or two per week and one outreach so we continue that pattern um, we're going to revisit everything uh, we have a regular meeting with the drum and the marketing group and we'll have another meeting this thursday to review everything so I, I will inform everyone if we make any kind of decisions or uh, I'll, I'll inform everybody by uh, email. How, how many nominations would you say you had? So far? Yes. I think it's eight to 10. Oh, good. Yeah. And you're working on those, huh? But we're, we're, well, not, many of those have already been um, uh, published. Um, we've been okay. doing two, two a week. Bill, you just reminded me, I got an email, I received an email from, was it from you? Someone was having a hard time getting in touch with a couple of the nominees, and they sent me an email and asked if I could help out, and I, uh, an email overload, I lost sight of that. Do you know if that's still a need? I suspect so, so let me, let me go back and review my email to see which, I don't remember what, uh, the details of that and it may have been rory from drum who reached out to you but yeah i think it, it probably was let me just see if i can pull up the email yeah uh, there it is yeah you do, do, do. so mary kaplan 
MCH Environmental Services and Paul Faber. Right. So I will, uh, I'll do that this week for sure. And I'll be in touch with, um, who should I be in? On this email was Karen, you, me, and Drum. Drum is great. Yeah, that's, that's everybody. Okay, great. Yeah, I think it's Drum who needs it, Laura. So. Okay, great. Yeah. But thanks. Thanks, Laura. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything else to report on in, from the marketing side? No, it's too bad Megan isn't here. She might have something, but uh, I'm not aware of it. All right, well, why don't you go to the uh, charging station? Yeah, really quickly, um, you may recall that Article 14, uh, Warrant Article 14 passed with a good majority um, on, the, on the town warrant. Uh, and, and we were budgeted for, the town is budgeted for up to $35,000 to establish an electric vehicle charging stations down in the Riverwalk parking lot, which I presume everybody knows where that is. Um, so the next phase is um, we put together our intelligence, you might say, um, from the Peterborough Energy Committee um, and ship that off to Rodney. I've been in contact with Rodney to let him know um, what we understand needs to be done and how much it's going to cost. Turns out it's going to cost considerably less than $35,000. That original quote was based on a... Um, a company that really doesn't normally do that sort of work. Anyway, so we have essentially two options, um, one of which uh, means that the town will actually do all the installation, uh, maintenance, and service, uh, and then basically give the electricity away for free. So you basically, if you own an electric vehicle, you'd come in, plug in, charge for as long as you wish. Uh, we'd like to put a two-hour time limit on it. But in any case, um, um, and that option we estimate based on uh, usage from Keene's uh, facility, um, we estimate that would cost us about $4,500 in the first year. So that's considerably less than $35,000. Uh, and then ongoing costs would be anywhere between $500 and $1,000 a year to pay for the electricity. Um, the other option is to hire a third party um, who will uh, supply the equipment, although we would own it. They would supply the equipment, um, they would hook it up, uh, and then they would manage the fee charging, uh, and then basically reimburse the town uh, for, for whatever we would set the charge rate to be, and then so we would pay off the electricity. And the, uh, I went out and got some informal quotes uh, on that, and it turns out that that the lowest we could get for that would be about seventy-one hundred dollars in the first year. Um, so it's considerably more money. Um, the issues, of course, are the fact that um, I got a lot of pushback when I suggested that we might give the electricity away for free. Um, there were some equity issues there. Uh, so a lot of townspeople, you know, explained to me that that's not a that's not an ethical thing to do. Uh, and what am I going to get out of it? I have a gasoline engine and you know, that kind of thing. Uh, in addition to that, um, service would be entirely on the town if we owned it. Well, we'll own the equipment outright, but we wouldn't have a service provider. So service for the equipment would be entirely on the town if we gave the electricity away for free in that scenario. Um, Apparently, the equipment is fairly low maintenance, you know, you basically plug in and unplug. Um, but, you know, there's always that issue of um, equipment failures and so on and so forth. There are warranties. Uh, and then, uh, so, so those are the major, those are the major issues. Um, and I just wanted to bring you up to date. We've been in contact with Rodney. I have not gotten any feedback. And I, and I presume, Karen, the next step would be Rodney would come to the select board for authorization for that expenditure. I think that's right, Bill. Do you know, um, you haven't indicated a time frame for Rodney or what you're looking at on that, have you? You know, <laughs> Rodney's a little hard to get a hold of these days, but- um, and, It's right and, down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's a little sticky, but I've, I've stepped away from the yeah. PEC um, for internal issues. 
Um, so I've opened up a separate uh, communication with Rodney and the Peterborough Energy Committee is now formulating their own collection of uh, intelligence and passing that along to Rodney as well. So whether I'll be in the loop or not, I don't know. Um, but I, I will stay certainly interested in the project and, and report to the EDA what I know. Okay. Well, I'm sure that it's uh, on the list. <laughs> well, and, and that will be uh, the decision be made by the select board? Well, I think, uh, I think what happens is that we're presented with the options, James, and then we have to make a decision about which option to go with. But um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen that on an agenda yet, so at some point. Um, would this committee make a recommendation or is that is that not our role? Is it simply just to provide the options? Good question. I think this committee could make a recommendation. I don't know if we wanted to get into a discussion, but I, I, I understand the, the equity issue. And um, I, it's, it's, it's like the town subsidizing feel for some people, but not others. So I think that we'd be opening ourselves up to that criticism. Especially a subsidy for folks that can, in general, buy a you know, $40,000 plus dollar car. And I was looking at the vote and it was the closest margin of any of the different items on the ballot this time. And I probably was because of that equity issue. So I would recommend that um, we would go with that version where it's, it's a paid service and have someone else do the maintenance on it. I'm oh, sorry, you recommend going with which service? Uh, I believe one option was to have a, a paid service where people would pay for the electricity and we would have someone manage the maintenance, if I heard correctly. So you recommend that one? Yes. And that's what Laura also was recommending, yes? Yes, I, th I think, I mean, I, I'm curious what other thoughts are with the, for the other option, but face value, that seems to be the more fair to me. Hi, Megan. We're talking about the EV charging station. I, uh, oh, all right. Now we're going to be competing for audio. Um, I, I should mention that um, I hesitate with either option. I'm, I'm, str I'm struggling with either option. Um, the primary reason is, is that the fee-based option um, is considerably more expensive. Uh, it will spend more town tax dollars. Uh, of course, it's coming out of the greater downtown TIF, but the point of it is, is that there is a significant difference in cost uh, between the two options. Could I recommend that maybe what we do is just table this, this discussion for a time when we have specific information on the costs of each option and then have that discussion um, for a recommendation? What I, what I will do is send to you what I sent to Rodney uh -huh. uh, just for review, but um, I, I don't have the PEC, uh, that committee's um, response to Rodney, so I'll, I'll okay. leave it up. Leave it All up right, there. that'd be great, Bill. But let's, is everyone in agreement that maybe we should table this until we have the specific information? Yeah. yeah. I, I just, I, I would like to do one thing before we table. Uh, I think there are some other sides to the argument in terms of making it a free. One is welcoming people into Peterborough uh, to come in on their travel. And the second is I don't agree with the argument that it's only for the rich that we're providing free electricity. I think electric cars are very broadly owned and I don't think it's just the billionaires that own. Um, so I d disagree uh, on some of the objections that have appeared in the, in the ledger. Uh, about doing it free. I'm on the other side of that coin. I completely we'll, disagree. We'll, excuse me? I completely disagree. If you're going to make minimum wage or anywhere, you know, slightly over minimum wage, you're not going to be able to afford an electric car that's going to run, I don't believe. Um, you know, if you're, you're buying a, you know, a thousand dollar junker car just so you can get to and from work, you're going to have to drive to the gas station and pay for gas. So, I don't think that we should subsidize folks that can buy a nicer electric car. I'm all for the environment. I'm all for, you know, having that available, but I think that it should be paid for. Okay, well, we'll, we'll delay this decision until we get the data. Um, 
and then have to make a recommendation to the select board. Okay, that sounds good. All right, moving on. Uh, the next agenda item was affordable housing. Um, and I'll give you two updates on that. The first is Evans Flat. The committee has been working on plans for putting affordable housing into the Evans Flat property owned by the town. We have three different options that we're considering that we were discussing last uh, week at our most recent meeting. And we have another meeting on Friday this week to continue that discussion. Um, and the options range from uh, just three different ways to manage the, or, uh, the creation of this property and, and a couple of different design options. Uh, so we're debating just what would be the most effective uh, use of the property. One decision that we have, that we have to understand is how the town will make a decision about the use and, and charge for the land uh, to go into this, to this process. I have that one question. Karen, do you have any idea of, of how this would be? No, no? Jay, I don't. I don't have any information on that. That might be something that um, Danica maybe could be helpful with. Um, okay. Well, we'll we'll check with her. But that was one question we had on on the uh, on the committee was, how does the decision get made about the way in which the town would be used? Um, Okay. And okay, well, so we'll follow up with her on that. Yeah, I, th I think it's just that. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, someone came on with Susan's iPad. Can you identify yourself, please? Uh, and you're muted, so. No? Oh. Who's that? Okay. Was that Jerry Ga Jerry Gallus? No, no, it may just be a someone joining the meeting as a spectator, perhaps. Um, so I asked the person to identify themselves, and they said no. <laughs> All right, that's okay. fine. Keep going. Okay. So, so Danica, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, uh, James, could you quickly just repeat what the question was? You had started to there. The question is, uh, we're talking about a project that putting affordable housing onto town owned land. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is stuff that we managed in several different ways uh, in terms of how we manage the, both the, the production and the financing of it. One question we'll ultimately have is what will the town's uh, requirements be in terms of uh, the use of the land, the cost of the land, and uh, the ongoing taxation of the land or the property. property, And the question we have as a committee is, who do we uh, talk to about the town's decision on land? Hmm. <laughs> I think that ultimately brings you to the select board level where you'd wanna have the conversation with them because it's really between whoever has ownership of that property, say it was held by a conservation commission's easement or if it is town owned land such as a park, usually it's just the select board that can make final decisions over. And Karen, you can tell me if I'm wrong here considering you're a select board member, but I imagine it would be a conversation at that level where you'd present what property it was and you talk about what the plans were. Now, if it has to do with affordable housing, you'd wanna make sure that it fit the district that it was in. Um, where some places border on, say um, you're looking at an area where it's right on the edge of one district to another. Sometimes those can those can switch <laughs> districts to make it easier to accommodate what you're trying to do. But for the most part, you're going to want to do it somewhere that the districts already are going to work for you. Um, did you have a place in mind that you're looking at? Oh, it's Evans Flat, uh, which is Evans Flats. Yeah, it's it's a land yeah. right right up there next to Scott Farrar. You know, on that on that. Uh, yeah, I had gotten, I just saw Sharon jump on, that's why, and I had gotten an email from her about um, Monadnock, the Monadnock uh, Community Hospital District. Yes. That's my second agenda. Uh, okay. Come on to so I'll wait for that then. But for the most part, I, I would start with meeting with the select port and asking them um, what their long term plans are for that property. 
because I don't have anything in my office that says what their long-term plans are. And Karen, you agree with that? I think so, James. Yeah. I mean, if you're making a proposal for a purchase of land or for some kind of arrangement for affordable housing, I think um, the select board would want to see a proposal, right? Um, and, okay. I would, and I would recommend that um, you do work with Danica's office just to make sure the zoning pieces are, are right, right? That you've got everything lined up. Absolutely. To us. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm happy to help. Okay. okay. Well, um, we'll plan to get to the to the um, to the uh, select board. Okay. Great. Um, Sharon, uh, uh, we have a question. Um, Sharon, you have a question. Um, yes, there is. Um, there is a conflict, but we'd like to do the proposal first um, with the select board because obviously you're the owners of the property. The town is the owners of the property and then probably I guess it's up and then with Danica um, having to do with the it, it seems like a minor conflict but the zoning conflict is it is zoned family district and family district workforce housing is allowed in family district but um, however under the workforce housing um, under the workforce housing um, section of the zoning ordinance, it only allows um, workforce housing where multifamily housing is allowed, which is not family district. So that's the conflict that needs to come later. But the first one seems to be if with the town, you know, if the select board is uh, interested in you know, pursuing this. Okay. Well, I, I'm sure that, um, you know, you could bring a proposal to us and we could take that first step. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So then the second uh, item, just I'll give you the headline of, um, we, uh, thanks to Laura, uh, we made contact with the hospital about creating uh, some affordable housing on hospital land. Um, and much to my delight, I, I met with the, the president and the chief financial officer of the, of, of the hospital, along with, along with uh, Laura, uh, when we were handing out masks uh, as part of the Rotary Club. And at that opportunity, I asked them whether they had any interest in putting uh, some substantial affordable housing onto property owned by the hospital. They both said they were very interested and I now have a, a um, call scheduled with, um, I think it's Tim, is that the right name? Uh, it's Rich, Schein, Rich Scheinblum. He's our executive vice president and chief financial officer. Uh, Rich, yes, I was looking at the wrong name on my list. Oh, that's okay. Rich. Um, and um, I have a, a call scheduled with him next week to discuss this and the committee will be talking about just what our options are in terms of the affordable housing. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah. again, there's been very much interest in that coming from Laura and from the other two people that I've spoken to at the hospital about doing this. Uh, and we like the idea of putting a substantial, uh, maybe apartment building up there that would have rental affordable housing more than we're talking about on Evans Flat. Uh, but again, that's just very, very initial meeting to start discussing this in more detail. Mm -hmm. well, that's just, as back, just as background, the hospital about, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago, we purchased a lot of property that's just north of the hospital on Old Street Road. And I believe it's about 11 acres and it's, it's beautiful property. And we have often thought, what, what could we do with that? And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things to figure out, but um, I'm glad that the conversation is going forward. And James gets all the credit here because he is very politely persistent. And, <laughs> and that's great. It's, that's how you get things done. <laughs> well, again, I really 
like the idea because uh, the hospital is one of the best and biggest employers in our community and, and to have something there for affordable workforce housing right there by you would make sense. Uh, when I look at the news, I see people being sought in the hospital for employment. Uh, we want to give them a place to live. Um, along with other places, I mean, other people uh, living there besides just employees of the hospital. Anyway, we're going to work on that topic, and so there will be more coming to the committee uh, as we move forward with uh, from the uh, hospital and the uh, and the housing committee. That's we'll move great. That's great news, James. We'll move on. Okay. Next item. What's um, what? Well, speaking of hospital, Laura, do you want to do a quick update? Um, oh, good. Sure. Good. Then I'll and then I'll segue off of that for the mask. Sure. We have opened all of our services with the exception of cardiac rehab and pulmonary rehab. So all services are open. Uh, those two services will be coming online in September and in October. They're a little more complicated because they're our most vulnerable patients. So there's been a little bit more uh, surrounding how we make that work. Um, our physician practices are seeing patients um, via uh, um, telemedicine and also in person. There's actually more being done in person than there are telemedicine. We really love the telemedicine option. It has a lot of benefits to patients, and I'm sure we're going to see that being used more and more as time goes on. But like anything, it takes people some time getting set up, and um, we are about 75% of our of our traditional volume right now. We don't um, expect that we're going to be able to get too much higher than that given the spacing, distancing, and other precautions that we have to follow. Um, we have consolidated some of our physician practices early on. And um, just so just to make you all aware, the Monadnock Family Care Practice, the practitioners in that office are working in other offices and that space is going to be is being used for a respiratory care clinic and that is a place when when a patient has respiratory symptoms we don't want to bring them into a regular physician's office so we have a special office for adults and pediatrics to go uh, to that designated space to be evaluated and treated so that office is is not Open it. It's not seeing its typical primary care patients. Um, Dr. Haley, uh, his last day is actually, I think his last day um, was Friday. Sorry, just looking at my calendar. <laughs> I wasn't looking for Dr. Haley. Um, so that, the new Ipswich office, uh, we are recruiting for practitioner there. We are recruiting for primary care physicians right now, but our Ridge office is open, Jaffrey, Antrim, Monadnock Internal Medicine, um, Monadnock Pediatrics. And the other item of note is, I was going to say one other thing. I guess that's about it. So um, yeah, we're only, you know, it's still the, the deficit is still an issue we're dealing with on a monthly basis. And we're hoping that you know, so much unknown in the future, but we're hoping that by 20, by October of 2021, that we'll be back on track, but that's still yet to be seen. So I, I think things are going very well. Um, the, the deficits aren't great, but you know, that's reality right now. And the troops are hanging in there. So I, I'd appreciate any feedback anyone has either during this meeting or offline. Yep. Hi, Jean. Yeah. Hey. Um, can you mute while I talk? Uh, I'm wondering. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if you were able to get any funding from anything. Did you folks, did yeah. you folks qualify for PPP or is hospitals not? Part no, of hospitals were part of a separate um, category. So we, we did receive CARES Act funding. And I believe we received about seven million. Oh, good. Yeah, so that is good. Still, you know, it is good. We're, we're grateful for that. We're hoping that 
The, our real concern is not so much this fiscal year because we only had six months of COVID, but next fiscal year, um, we anticipate it's going to be tougher for us, as I'm sure it is for many businesses. Um, Laura, I just wanted to offer you that I was on a call with uh, Taylor Caswell, BEA, this morning, mm -hmm. and they were talking, uh, mentioned something I had just heard recently that New Hampshire Employment Securities um, has a new job listing site for COVID related jobs, mm -hmm. so, uh, especially for hospitals. Mm. Uh, uh, and other healthcare related jobs. Um, so I don't yeah. know if you're aware of that. Maybe um, hearing that you have openings, maybe you want to be posting some of so that. What is that, Karen? Where is that? Uh, it's New Hampshire Employment Securities, so NHES. Okay. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Great. Oh, we'll look into that. Yep. Thank okay. you. Great. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions about hospital? Then we'll move to masks. Yeah, thank you, James. So uh, this morning, yes, actually Friday, I guess it was, Laura dropped off. There's a campaign ongoing to mask up here in the Monadnock region. These uh, windows static, uh, I don't know what you call them. They're static, right? Like they decals, go, kind of. Yeah, they're decals. They stick to windows. For businesses and it's a campaign to remind folks that wearing masks saves lives so we have a quantity of these in my office right here and uh, i would like to use these as an opportunity to visit businesses in our town uh, to drop one off and to have a conversation with business owners about how things are going so i'm looking for volunteers in our group who would be willing to take a section of a list, take a stack of the, the decals and uh, go out and visit and report back in from our business community about how things are going. So, um, so that's my request. Uh, I will do some, but I also need some folks who are willing to take a section of town and go see people. So um, any volunteers? I've got Jean. Well, Karen, can, uh, okay. I'll take some too. Um, but is there any chance I could reach back out to the people we originally spoke to? That sure. would be nice yeah. to circle back, I think. Yeah, I can go back to that list and, and redistribute the same list if that's what you'd like. Uh, that would be good for me just because I'd like to talk to the Thai food places who I talk to and I know they just reopened, so I'd like to get an idea. But I had just sent you guys out to restaurants, right? So there'll be it'll be a broader list of retail as, as well as other um, offices and such. So, um, Karen, help. Oops, sorry. I'd have, I'd be happy to do it. Okay. How many people are on that list, Karen? I'm just curious. I have to go back through it, Laura. I just okay. haven't had a chance yet today. I think there's about 70 decals, and we can certainly get more. Okay. All right. So I've got uh, Megan, Bill, James, and Jean. Uh, anyone else on in the group willing to take a stack? And if not, I know you're busy, so that's fine too, but this is helpful. So I'll organize this and be back in touch with you individually to, to coordinate to get them to you, okay? Can we also do nonprofits? Uh... Sure, I, 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 yeah, of course. Yeah. Any organization, yeah. Yep. And just just F, just for information, we are going to be reaching out to the town offices in the other towns in our primary service area and offering the same to them. So we would simply swap out the Peterborough Town logo emblem with their their town. Okay. All right. Um. Great. All right. So that that's great. So I'll coordinate back. And uh, thanks for that note, Jamie, about um the employment site also having a senior care job section. That's good to know. So, um, all right. Okay, so in, terms, in terms of agenda, we originally had promoting the region on there. I think you said we took it off. Yeah, we're gonna postpone that until I can get Phil. I gave him very little notice on that. So let's just push that to next month. Okay, well, I've got a couple of uh, questions of miscellaneous uh, if, if we've got a few more minutes. We do. Uh, one is, do we have any broadband 
news. I'm That's just coming. Jean, do you have Actually. news? <laughs> uh, the news, the governor signed HB 111 or 1111111. Um, and we now have telecommunications districts. So um, towns may uh, work together to attract broadband providers. Uh, and we, that also has those new regulations for mapping so that if a region um, if a provider covers a region but refuses to provide a town with a map as part of a bid, uh, then that region is no longer considered covered by that uh, provider. Thank you. Sounds like good news. Is that good news, Jean? <laughs> it's another tool in the tool chest. Uh, I think we've got the regulatory environment we need now, so we just need the money. I will say that um, Annie, uh, Annie Custer's team has told me that um, the House passed a $50 billion rural broadband bill, um, but of course the Senate is <laughs> not, so <laughs> yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Danica, do you have any, uh, any news about, uh, about I do. broadband? I do. So uh, truly about 10 minutes before this meeting started, I got a package delivered of our first RFP submittal. So I'll, I'll drop that off upstairs in Roddy's office and we'll keep those on hand. And um, the deadline for the rest of the submissions is, geez, I think it's already, it's already here, it's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. So we'll go through uh, all of those RFP submissions on Friday and we'll select one, if any, and have that submitted to the state. But the big update is that we received our first big packet this morning. So you're gonna choose one by the end of the week? Yep, so we'll wait until the end of the week. Um, that's the, the, the final deadline for all RFPs to be received. Um, we'll sit down, go through and select one, if any, we'll likely uh, select one, but in the event that we don't, but uh, that'll get submitted to the state for approval. And then hopefully, hopefully we get broadband for those areas that are unserved and underserved. Okay, any other comments or questions about uh, broadband? I'm I'm confused because I thought the deadline for a state submittal was way past. It was two weeks ago. You're correct about that. But um, I reached out to and I already forget her name uh, from the RFP office at OSI. Uh, towns have the ability to submit their own uh, submittals past date. They may or may not be selected when past date, but if their funding allows, they can still be selected. So. At this point, if there was a submission that went through to the state by deadline for the state's application, um, we'd hope it encompasses us if it gets chosen that way. But if there is left, there is the potential that they can choose our submission to be funded. I see. Um, it's quite likely that we'll, there will be leftover funding because it was so hard to qualify. However, <laughs> um, the well, it will be interesting to see what your provider said because, um, as I'm sure you know, they have to um, supply 90% of the funding up front and they yeah. don't get paid back uh, if they're not, if the whole project isn't complete by December 31st. So um, I'll, I'll be very surprised to see what kind of our. <laughs> I, yeah, I have my fingers crossed to see what comes into the state level, but. We, we at least have one in the door right now, which is, which is good feeling. So, yeah. okay. Yep. Well, I hope that we get it uh, approved. <laughs> so, um, it, it, my other question is anybody else do the small business uh, uh, development uh, attachment that Karen sent to us? What, which one was that James? You sent it in an email saying, read the, uh, the survey, the, S the small business development survey. Yep. I went on and looked at it. Did anybody else look at it? Jean, you have any comments? You're muted, yeah. You're muted. Not really. No comments? It was really informational. I just wanted folks to be aware that that had come out. I looked at it and, and I was not surprised by the information. So uh, it, it, it sounded like, you know, most businesses were, were, were coping. I, I didn't see anything really 
drastic in it. Uh, but again, yeah. Anybody? And no one else uh, has reviewed that. Well, reviewed, okay. it, reviewed it, but no comment. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I do. I have one other thing, James, that I want to raise, and that I'm aware of um, some businesses in town that are struggling right now. Um, you may be aware that the Peterborough Community Theater has launched a GoFundMe campaign to try and stay in business. Um, and they've raised, uh, I believe, a little over $10,000. They're, they're, they're in kind of a tough spot because of all, all the businesses that uh, opened in the state. Uh, theaters were one of the last, I think they were the last list, and they are the hardest ones to try and pivot to some model where they can make a business work. So, um, so you may be aware of that. I'm also working with Vicuña Chocolate right now, who is uh, really struggling uh, both between having a, taken over a new business as a new owner, um, being in the location where the Main Street Bridge project is going on and having a significant number of other challenges. Um, um, I was able to uh, refer the owner there to uh, Kieran Nagel, who does uh, entrepreneur consulting with food businesses and they're connecting this week. Um, but just to say that if you hear of businesses in town who are struggling, please direct them to me and I'll try and hook them up with whatever help we can give them. Um, but, but I'm hearing them kind of one by one or I see them on social media that they're posting about it. So if you're, if you're hearing that through the grapevine or in these visits that we do, please make sure that I'm aware of that so we can figure out what resources we can bring. Yeah, I'm, I'm also helping businesses uh, in this way. And um, I uh, recently purchased businesses may qualify for gap funding, Karen. Yeah, I'm, I heard that today too, Jean, and I'm gonna make sure that they know that. Okay, the, the um, last seminar for that is I think- 28th. Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got it, thank you. Can you turn off your speaker? I wanna say something, Jean. Okay, and, and um, Sharon Monahan has her hand up, James. Okay, Sharon. Unmute yourself, Sharon. I was curious: has there been any outreach on um, towards the businesses that have not opened yet? I am thinking of someone like the bowling alley. Mm. That's a great question, Sharon. Thank you. Um, we have had we had initial outreach to uh, the bowling alley when we were doing the restaurant reopening um, go around, uh, but they hadn't responded to anything. So, um, is there anyone else that you're thinking of that we should reach out to? No, I was just wondering if there could be a survey of some sort um, while you're co getting feedback from the other yeah. small businesses, which ones are not open, which ones are, or which ones are not open fully, um, you know, if they have limited hours or which ones are still takeout only or just something like that, some sort of a outreach within the community of all the small businesses of what has been changed or. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't done it in a while. Uh, the challenge for us with a survey is we don't have everyone's email. So um, it's easier for us to actually go physically and speak with folks and try and make a contact either by phone. Um, so the survey idea, I love that, but I just don't have everybody's email address. Well, Karen, thank you for, for that. And, and uh, just one thing, if you see any investment need that can't be covered, uh, please, contact uh, our town capital because yeah. our whole purpose is supporting businesses here in in, in peterborough uh yeah. to to uh, either start or survive yeah james i did actually give um the owner of vicuña roy's, e roy's email address and connected them for our town capital so maybe you could follow up with roy about vicuña chocolate okay okay yeah. I, I, I do have one other miscellaneous item, uh, Karen. Uh, I was not able to join the last task force uh, Zoom meeting, 
for uh, housing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did read the, the notes. And am, am I right that that committee has now been canceled? Well, uh, it's it's taken a new shape is what's happened. Folks have um, determined that there are areas of housing they want to work in and get some things done because we've we've only been meeting by Zoom and it's been kind of frustrating to try and uh, figure out a community engagement strategy when you can't actually engage the community um, any in any way other than kind of online. So the group, um, the the I believe we recorded it, James, so you can watch it. Um, and, uh, but the group decided that it would like to put its energy into working on housing, uh, projects like your affordable housing, uh, project that you're working on with, um, your group right. and, um, and there's a, there's a, you know, there, there were a number of places where people were going to kind of slot into doing work together. No, I um, saw that in the notes. Yeah. 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 So that is what happened, and that was the group's decision at this point because it was just feeling like we were treading water and not really getting uh, the kind of work done that we wanted to get done or could right now because of COVID. Well, and again, I think it's good because now the, the 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 whole topic is let's get involved in specific projects and 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 you know connect up with things like the uh, Evans Flat or whatever. Uh, you know, it's so good. That's what yeah. we should do. All right, any other comments or questions? I have an item of interest. Um, um, okay, Bill. Good to, good to see that you're on board here, Jerry. Um, we had a wonderful, and Jerry organized it, um, uh, outreach to the Franklin Pierce community. Um, do we have any plan? Now, first of all, I believe Franklin Pierce is planning to reopen in the fall. Is that truly the case? Does anyone know? Yes, it is the case. Does the EDA have any interest in doing an outreach program similar to what we did last year? That's you, Jerry. When, uh, uh, am I on mute or? No, you're on, Jerry. Okay, fine. <laughs> I had hit the mute button on my phone. Um, uh, Kim says that they are struggling to figure out how best to open. And they're talking about part, you know, partially opening. They did have an intake day about, oh God, I'm going to say uh, three weeks or more ago, which was very, very small. Mm. Uh, I, I think it was 20, 30 people as opposed to the 300 usually. Um, there, there hasn't been a discussion of how we might work with them other than that at the last EDA call, I raised the subject and basically the thing was stand down because our program was really directed towards getting FPU students and parents to come to Peterborough for our restaurants and, and so forth, restaurants, theater, and the like. Uh, I don't know that that uh, order changes because of uh, the passage of a month. Any ideas? It's a real dilemma because on the one hand, if people are actually showing up at Franklin Pierce, they're going to need to eat. <laughs> and so where do you go? Uh, I, I, I well, um, the, well, the students are, are eating there at, uh, at their facilities. Okay? And very few of them were coming north as it was. Um, and the parents, uh, I don't know what that status is. Yeah, I think it's still pretty tricky because, you know, our restaurants are primarily outdoor seating right now um you know it's it's a uh, small groups coming out but i i think you know how much promotion you want to do uh to draw people when what we're saying is we really want to manage you know social distancing and masks and not have crowds from especially from out of state at this point it's a it is right. a tight the trick right Right, and a uh, vast majority of the FPU students are from out of state. Right, are they, Jerry, do you know, has, has Kim said anything about um, their testing protocol or, or what they're doing with having kids come back on campus? Um, uh, we, did, we, didn't, we didn't talk about that, I can find out. Okay, yeah, just wonder about that. But I, I think it's still, so the stand down order is probably still stand down <laughs> at this point. <laughs> That's 
that's fine. But since I am in the conversation, I'll, one, I want to apologize for being late. I got delayed with something, so I didn't get into it until you were in the hospital stuff. Uh, the other one was on the last call. There was question whether um, the Monadnock paper was running into particular difficulties. And I talked to Bill up there, and he said, yeah, the same difficulties everybody else is having, uh, but not overwhelming he reminded me that they do have a plant in, oh, God, is it Indiana, Illinois, Central, someplace. And they went full steam there because they were producing fabric for masks. So they were doing okay. His biggest problem was employees, the first round being scared, and then uh, realizing that they were deemed essential, they had to come in. And then they complained that all their other friends who were unemployed we're getting benefits greater than paper was paying. So they had a little recoupment issue, mm -hmm. uh, keeping their own people happy, which they managed. So they're doing okay. Thank you, Jerry. Jean. Good. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that that feedback is, is pervasive here in New Hampshire and there will not be benefits on that scale coming from the feds uh, anymore. Um, what uh, I wanted to say, though, uh, we did pass a um, bill relating to how it's, it's quite complicated, but it's relating to how uh, industrial and commercial plants can um, use how, what their charges are for electricity, even if they're providing their own. And uh, in the past, there was a huge um, penalty if you were also as a, uh, an industry um, providing uh, industrial site, providing your own electricity. And um, we passed and the governor signed a bill to stop that penalty from happening. And um, this is something that I know the paper mill was suffering from specifically. So this should have helped them. Nice. Good. Okay. Uh Unless there's any other uh, miscellaneous items, uh, we need a date for our next uh, meeting. We do. And are we going to do it in one month, Karen? Yeah, that's what we've been doing, James. So, so just... the 24th at 11 o'clock? I think that's fine if that's good for the group. August 24th, 11 o'clock. Okay. And we still assume it's a Zoom? It'll be, yes, by Zoom and uh, because as far as I know, the, bu the building is still closed. Um, so um, by Zoom, unless you hear otherwise between now and then, and if you have agenda items, please forward them to me and uh, we'll make sure they're on the top for next year, for next month. Okay, and, and again, town hall is, is, still, is still completely closed? Um, the, to the public, yes, except for the clerk's office uh, entrance by the side one by one, but that's it. But again, again, going into pay clerk's bills and things like that, is that open? The clerk's office is, yes. The clerk's office is open. Okay. Yeah, but for, town, but for meetings in the selectman's room, uh, the building's closed. Right. Yeah. I have one quick quick question. Um, my husband and I had, had put in our paperwork to get the absentee ballots, and we didn't get them for the town. Who should I speak with about that? Clerk's office, Linda. Uh, Laura, just go to Linda. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, I, I, I got mine and and, um, and I got it back. I got the, I got the, the ballot. You got your ballots. Good. Yeah. yeah. It, it worked. Sharon, Sharon it worked. has her hand up, James, before we close. Sure. Before we you close, um, Sharon, it's sorry. a question sorry. and I'm not sure if it's already been addressed, but if not, I would like to have it on the agenda next time. But my question is, is there a list of the organizations um, who raise funds for our nonprofits and a means of the nonprofits connecting with the typical organizations in town that raise money and donate it towards them? I'm thinking of, is there anything that, is there a list of these people, for example, I'm with the Lions Club, and you know, where we typically do fundraising for um, the 
nonprofits in the area. Um, and there's the Rotary Club, the Sunshine Club, the Kiwanis Club. Um, there's 100 Women. Um, there's quite a few organizations that are charitable or um, our nonprofits are dependent on receiving funds from. And it seems like there's not a coordination of how the two can meet, whether this can be addressed through a Zoom platform where a representative of the, from both sides, you know, whether they, because right now it seems like all fundraising activities have been suspended. Um, sure. So I'm going to suggest that you connect with me separately on this because um, I am coordinating the nonprofit network here in the region. So um, we should let's have a conversation about that because that group um, uh, hasn't had a meeting in a while. It could have a meeting and that could be that we could have representatives from those groups um, to meet with that group. That might be great. Thank you very much. All right. We'll connect. Okay. Well, Thank you, everybody. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I, I, I vote yes. Okay. Uh, do we have a second of a motion to adjourn? <laughs> okay, second, Gene, fine. seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you. We're adjourned. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good meeting. Nice to thank see everybody. Adjourned.